An 85-year-old British citizen in Sudan was shot by snipers and his wife then died of starvation after they were left to fend for themselves by the British embassy in Sudan. Their family has told News Arabic. Abdallah Sholgami lived with his 80-year-old disabled wife, Alawea Rishwan, just over the road from the UK's diplomatic mission, the UK's diplomatic mission in Khartoum. But despite repeated calls for help, the London hotel owner was never offered support to leave Sudan, even when a British military team was sent to evacuate diplomatic staff. Instead, the elderly couple were told to go to an airfield 40 kilometers, 25 miles, outside Khartoum which would have meant crossing a war zone to board an evacuation flight. The UK Foreign Office acknowledged that the Sholgamas' case was extremely sad, but added that our ability to provide consular assistance is severely limited and we cannot provide in-person support within Sudan. A man has been arrested after four people were killed in a rare shooting and stabbing attack in Japan. The alleged assailant stabbed a woman and shot two policemen with a hunting rifle in Nagano Prefecture. A fourth death was later confirmed. Police have named the suspect as Masanori Aoki, the 31-year-old son of a local politician. Shootings of multiple police officers are even rarer, with the last incident taking place more than 30 years ago. In Thursday's incident, police received a call at around 16.25, 7.25 Greenwich Mean Time, about a man who had chased and then stabbed a woman, according to Japanese news agency Kyoto. An eyewitness working in a nearby field told Kyoto that the man's attack on his first victim had been carried out with a blade around 30 centimeters, one foot, long. His motive is not clear. When the witness asked the suspect why he had stabbed the woman, he is said to have replied, I killed her because I wanted to. Queen Elizabeth II faced a potential assassination threat during a 1983 visit to the U.S., newly released FBI documents show. The Federal Bureau of Investigation has released a cache of files relating to the late Queen's travels to the U.S., following her death last year. They show how the FBI, which helped secure the monarch's safety during her visits, worried about IRA threats. The assassination threat was made to a police officer in San Francisco. According to the file, an officer who frequented an Irish pub in San Francisco warned federal agents about a call from a man he had met at the venue. The officer said the man told him he was seeking revenge for his daughter who had been killed in Northern Ireland by a rubber bullet. The threat came on the 4th of February 1983 about a month ahead of Queen Elizabeth II and her husband Prince Philip's visit to California.
Indian woman wrestler Hamida Banu rose to stardom in the 1940s and 50s, when the sport was still a male bastion. Her spectacular feats and larger-than-life persona brought her global fame, but then she disappeared from the scene. BBC Urdu's Nayas Faruqi traced Banu's story to find out what happened to the woman to the woman who many call India's first professional woman wrestler. Beat me in a bout and I'll marry you. That was the unusual challenge that Banu, then in her early 30s, issued to male wrestlers in February 1954, according to news reports from the time. Soon after the announcement, Banu defeated two wrestling champions, one from Patiala in northern Punjab state and the other from Kolkata, then Calcutta, in the eastern West Bengal state. Wall Street giant J.P. Morgan Chase is cutting jobs at failed U.S. lender First Republic Bank after buying the firm this month. Around 1,000 roles, or 15%, of First Republic's workforce will be cut. Also this week, First Citizens, which bought the U.S. unit of another troubled lender, announced job cuts. Earlier this year, problems at U.S. regional banks triggered fears about a more widespread crisis. J.P. Morgan confirmed that it was cutting roles that were held by workers at the San Francisco-based bank but did not put a figure on the job losses. The affected employees will receive pay and benefits for 60 days, along with a package which includes a lump sum payment and other benefits. J.P. Morgan also said it was assisting them with finding new roles within or outside the company. A noodle vendor in Vietnam who parodied one of the country's most powerful ministers has been jailed for five and a half years for anti-state propaganda. Bui Tuan Lam became famous when he posted a video in 2021 mimicking the trademark gestures of the high-end London-based restaurateur Salt Bay. A minister had been previous previously filmed eating a gold leaf-covered steak in a Salt Bay video, causing a scandal. The Vietnamese government is strictly intolerant of dissent. The 39-year-old's trial and sentencing in a Da Nang court took just one day. He must serve four years of probation after being released. In his video, Tuan Lam spread green onions on his noodle soups in imitation of the Turkish celebrity chef, real name Nisret Goksha, who often sprinkles salt on steak in a theatrical manner. After two decades in power and more than a dozen elections, 
Turkey's authoritarian leader Recep Tayyip Erdogan knows how to work a room. At a taxi driver's convention in Istanbul, they could not get enough of him. He controlled the crowd like the conductor of an orchestra. They cheered and clapped and booed the opposition on position on cue. The venue was a waterside convention center in Istanbul, built during his time as mayor of the city. The rally reached a crescendo as the president delivered his parting shot. One nation, one flag, one motherland, one state. By then, many aging drivers were on their feet, punching the air or raising one arm in a salute. Ayşe Azdoğan, a conservatively dressed woman in a headscarf, had come early with her taxi driver husband to hear her leader's every word. A crutch rested on the seat next to her. She struggles to walk but could not stay away. Scientists have used artificial intelligence, AI, to discover a new antibiotic that can kill a deadly species of superbug. The AI helped narrow down thousands of potential chemicals to a handful that could be tested in the laboratory. The result was a potent, experimental antibiotic called Abacin, which will need further, te further tests before being used. The researchers in Canada and the U.S. say AI has the power to massively accelerate the discovery of new drugs. It is the latest example of how the tools of artificial intelligence can be a revolutionary force in science and medicine. Antibiotics kill bacteria. However, there has been a lack of new drugs for decades and bacteria are becoming harder to treat, as they evolve resistance to the ones we have. The researchers focused on one of the most problematic species of bacteria, Acinetobacter bomani, which can infect wounds and cause pneumonia. Google has removed a highly controversial game called Slavery Simulator from its app store after it caused outrage in Brazil. The app, which allowed players to buy and sell black characters, was launched by Magnus Games on the 20th of April. The game was downloaded more than 1,000 times before it was removed on Wednesday, local media reported. Brazil is a country still coming to terms with its legacy of slavery, which was only abolished in 1888. In a description of the game, the developer boasted that users could exchange, buy and sell slaves. It also allowed players to inflict various forms of terms of torture on black characters. According to images of the game, users were offered a choice to either liberate the enslaved characters or use slaves for your own enrichment. Prevent the abolition of slavery and accumulate wealth.
The leader of a far-right militia has been sentenced to 18 years in prison for his role in the U.S. Capitol riot. Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers, was convicted on charges of seditious conspiracy and other crimes. The sentence is the longest yet given to a Capitol rioter. Prosecutors had asked for, for 25 years. Meanwhile, Kelly Meggs, the leader of the militia's Florida chapter, was jailed for 12 years. Rhodes remained outside the Capitol, but coordinated with Meggs and other members who stormed the building. Rhodes and Meggs were also convicted of obstruction of an official proceeding and tampering with docu documents or proceedings in one of the highest-profile trials related to the riot on 6 January 2021. At a hearing on Thursday, Rhodes showed little remorse, claiming he was a political prisoner and insisting that the Oath Keepers were standing in opposition to people who are destroying our country. An engineering chief at Twitter says he is leaving the company the day after the launch of Ron DeSantis' U.S. presidential campaign on the platform was hit with technical glitches. Fode Debiri tweeted, After almost four incredible years at Twitter, I decided to leave the nest yesterday. Mr. DeSantis' entry into the race for the White House, White House was hit by problems as a Twitter livestream malfunctioned. More than 80% of the firm's workforce has been cut since Mr. Musk bought it. Mr. Dabiri, who was the engineering lead for Twitter's growth organization, said in a tweet he had experienced two distinct eras at the company before and after it was acquired by, by the multi-billionaire last year. Elon Musk's brain chip firm says it has received approval from the U.S. Food and Drugs Administration, FDA, to conduct its first tests on humans. The billionaire's Neuralink implant company wants to help restore people's vision and mobility by connecting brains with computers. It says it does not have immediate plans to start recruiting participants. Mr. Musk's previous ambitions to begin tests came to nothing. The regulator itself is yet to comment. An earlier bid by Neuralink to win FDA approval was rejected on safety grounds, according to a report in March by the Reuters news agency that cited multiple current and former employees. Neuralink hopes to use its microchips to treat conditions such as paralysis and blindness and to help certain disabled people use computers and mobile technology. The chips, which have been tested in monkeys, are designed to interpret signals produced in the brain and relay information to devices via Bluetooth.
Two cheetah cubs have died and a third is in a critical condition at a national park in India's Madhya Pradesh state. Another cub died in the national park on Tuesday. The cubs were the first to be born in India in more than 70 years after the animals were declared officially extinct in the country. A female cheetah translocate translocated from Namibia to India last year had given birth to them in March. Following this, the female cheetah and her three cubs were put under observation, authorities at the park said in a press note. Temperature in the park had hit nearly 47 C on Tuesday and the cubs did not seem to be in normal condition, they said. The cubs were found to be weak, underweight and extremely dehydrated. Two cubs died on Thursday despite steps taken to save them, the park authorities said. A towering cotton tree which has stood for several hundred years in Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown, has been brought down by a heavy storm. President Julius Mata Bio said the tree fell after a downpour on Wednesday night. He described it as a great loss to the nation. He said the tree was a symbol of liberty for early, for early settlers. It also appears on Sierra Leone banknotes. But some Christians hailed its demise, saying it was used for witchcraft. A heavy rainstorm a week ago caused one of the tree's branches to fall, but it had been thought it would survive. However, in another storm on Wednesday, the end came down, leaving just part of the trunk still standing. The 70 meters, 230 feet high cotton tree was said to be the oldest of its kind in the country. A government statement estimated it to be 400 years old. Just 300 meters away are the Freedom Steps climbed by newly arrived freed slaves who offered prayers who offered prayers at the tree before making freetown their home as the city grew over the years it expanded around the ancient tree at its heart More than five decades after he began his studies, Arthur Ross finally walked across the stage at the University of British Columbia, UBC, on Thursday to receive his Bachelor of Arts degree. Mr. Ross, 71, said he is likely the slowest student at the Vancouver University. He also may be the slowest or may be the slowest in the world. It took him precisely 54 years to finish his degree, two years longer than the Guinness World Record holder, Robert F. P. Cronin who began his biology degree at Princeton University in 1948 and graduated in 2000. But Mr. Ross said he is in no rush to claim his world record, his world record title. The real reward, he said, was the knowledge he was able to gain through his classes. I just wanted to learn because I was curious, Mr. Ross told the BBC this week. That desire for learning, he said, is what inspired him to finish his degree after all these years.